Last night, the community of Uvalde, Texas, marked the first anniversary of the mass shooting at Robb Elementary School. And Congress has about one week left to raise the federal debt limit. Good morning. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. Mourners in Uvalde, Texas, came together last night to mark the first anniversary of the mass shooting at Robb Elementary School. Texas Public Radio's Jia Chen has more. The night started with a prayer vigil at the Uvalde County Fairplex. The families of the victims invited the public to a candle lighting ceremony and a butterfly release to honor the victims. Uvalde resident Michael Cortez says the town has been ripped apart by the horrific shooting, the controversy over law enforcement's response and still unanswered questions. But this moment of unity was something special. I think it was needed for our town. Uh, It's been a year, but it still feels like it's the day of. Survivors of previous school shootings came to town to support the families, saying for many this moment marked the first night of acceptance to live in the new reality that was thrust on them a year ago. I'm Jia Chen in Uvalde. The Treasury Department says Congress has about one more week to raise the federal debt limit. Otherwise, the federal government will run out of cash to pay all its bills. Some personal finance experts are advising people to prepare for the possibility of a debt default by essentially preparing for an economic downturn. NPR's Arizvu Rezvani has more. If the U.S. defaults on its debt, the cost of borrowing money would soar, making it harder for everyone to buy homes, cars, or pay off credit card debts, which would send a chill through the U.S. economy. That's why personal finance experts like Anna Hilhoski of NerdWallet are advising people to prepare for a possible worst-case scenario. We're advising people to prepare for a potential default as you would for an impending recession. Under a debt default, millions of Americans could see their benefits and payments suspended. Combined with a spike in interest rates, people could pull back on spending. So could businesses, increasing the likelihood of layoffs, all hallmarks of a recession. Arzu Rezvani, NPR News, Los Angeles. Western intelligence officials and Microsoft are warning that a state-sponsored Chinese hacking group has been spying on critical infrastructure networks in the U.S., especially Guam. The National Security Agency and its allies in the Five Eyes Intelligence Network, which includes Britain, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, say that similar activities could be happening elsewhere. Australia's Shadow Minister for Home Affairs and Cybersecurity, Senator James Patterson, says Australian lawmakers are aware of this. It is my judgment that if this is happening in the United States, then it's happening in every other Five Eyes country as well, and that our critical infrastructure is equally vulnerable. Um, Experts have testified before our intelligence committee in Australia that it's highly likely that there is a dormant presence on our critical infrastructure networks waiting to be activated as a prelude to a regional or global security crisis. He spoke to the BBC. Today marks three years since George Floyd was murdered by a then Minneapolis police officer. Mourners are expected to gather at the site of his slaying and observe several days of events, including a candlelight vigil. Minneapolis has recently agreed to a settlement with the state of Minnesota to make changes to police department policies and training. The U.S. Justice Department is still investigating the Minneapolis police. This is NPR News.